All right, guys, welcome back into another PGA DFS video. Going to be going over the round one recap of the Corrales Championship. Got some good builds going for that one. As kind of expected, you know, we, we typically dominate those alternative field events for some weird reason. It'd be great to have an awesome week on a main event like we do on the alternative field events. Also, we'll be recapping that round two, group two stage of the Dell Technologies match play. Let's get into it. All right, guys, so we will start off with that Dell Technologies match play. So as I'm recording, this round two is currently finishing up um, Cam Smith versus Ian Poulter. Let's just take a quick peek there. Um, is Cam Smith, he might, six footer for Cam Smith to have it. Ian Poulter has to make a 15 footer. Oh boy, that'd be a nice little comeback. Kind of like Matthew Wolf had down two with two holes to go. Matthew Wolf with the comeback to have the match as well. This would be huge if Cam Smith could have this because then... Right on track to have a decent week. Um, one interesting thing that I saw today, too, just kind of looking over the lineups and whatnot. Zero lineups have six for six right now. Correct. And like 2% with like five out of six. And then like four to like 7% with four out of six. The majority of people have like three out of six, which is crazy for the match play tournament. So some exciting stuff there. Um, let's see here. Any really crazy results? Sebastian Munoz being Ryan Palmer, that could actually hurt. Hopefully Palmer can come back. Looks like John Rahm is going to be able to beat that group potentially. Kind of looks like he's going to be able to walk away with that if he secures that win. Kevin Kisner, JT was down four on the back nine. Almost came back. He did not. So JT is pretty much, I mean, JT's done. It's really going to come down to Kevin Kisner versus Matt Kuchar. Very interesting there. Uh, like I said, guys, that was a Taurus 20 female grouping was the most difficult to predict because you had three guys that were really hot. And then you had Dylan Fertelli as well, who I didn't think that we should be sleeping on. Currently, Dylan Fertelli is in the rider seat there. Jason Kolkrak does have a chance to take down that grouping, though, which I personally hope I had a little bit more of him. We have Abraham Manser looking like he could close it out tomorrow. Um, Mackenzie Hughes. Sadly, I ended up on him in a decent amount of GPPs. Just that's kind of how lineup construction worked with the lineup builder. So some interesting stuff there. Oh, darn it. Cam Smith did not make the putt or they both made the putt. They both made it. Wow. Both. Well, wait. Yeah. Okay. Just then finalized. Both made the putt. That's impressive there. Huh. Good stuff, though, all around. But let's get into the exciting stuff, guys. The Corrales Putacana Resort and Club Championship. So, real quick, I mean, do we pull up the player pool? We'll pull up the player pool real quick. Just to show you guys. It's good stuff. So, pretty much everyone but Andrew Yan, Rafael Campos, and Mark Anderson. Everyone else that is, like, T4 or better is in the player pool. And, like, shoot from... Yeah, in the top 10, let's just do that real quick. In the top 10, I want to see how many players that we were on in our player pool. So, Stefan Yeager, he's a low exposure play. Joel Dahman, low exposure play. Nate Lashley, high exposure play. Or was he a core play? We'll pull it up here real quick, actually. Just to kind of give you guys the look at it, of it. It's going pretty well. Have a bunch of... GPPs that are in contention already to take it down in good position to move on. So Nate Lashley, he was a high exposure play that's in good shape. Charlie Hoffman, core play in good shape. Justin Suh, core play in great shape. Sam Ryder, I believe he was a mid exposure play. He's in good shape. Thomas Peters, high exposure play, good shape. Joseph Brenlip, low exposure play, <laughs> in good shape so lots of good stuff there lots of high predictability thus far for us so i'm really looking forward to hopefully some of these guys maybe making a little bit a little bit of a push so really this week is going to depend on two players for me it's going to depend on vincent whaley making the cut need him to make the cut and then it's going to come down to also um who is it chase seifert as well those are the two that i really need to go ahead and you know Make the cut. 72 for Chase Seifert. You know, all he has to do is probably go 200 tomorrow, which I kind of expect him to. If that happens, it's going to be a spectacular week. But as you guys can see, looking like it's going to be a very solid week. Once again, got a lot of good GPP lines going. 
Right, this could be the week, guys. I'm really hoping that it is as well. But let's get into those round two showdown picks. Oh, and I should mention, had a member of 9 to 5 get second place there on showdown round one as well. So lots of good things going on for 9 to 5 this week for the Corrales. Um, yeah, we'll get into that round two showdown rank here. Oh, that's just for those two. Jay Seifert expected to be a decent play, though. All right, he does have that morning tea time, and I do think that we should be favoring that morning tea time. So the only problem with this week, especially showdown wise, is that there's a lot of players that just simply do not qualify. So that's that's the unfortunate side of it. Let's just sort it by round two rank. All right, so Justin's uh, probably, I don't know, he doesn't have the favorable tee time, but he's still going to be a solid play for you. Emiliano Grillo with that favorable tee time, probably want to play him. Going to be a strong pick for you guys. Um, let's see who else here. I believe Roger Sloan um, has that later tee time. DJ Trahan actually has that later tee time as well. He'd be a good pick for you. I do expect someone like Seb Straka, who kind of did poorly in round one. I expect him to have a much better round two. Um, kind of going back to expected likelihood there um it's more likely that after kind of struggling in round one he's gonna have a much better round two uh, but overall you know pretty solid approach here you know hank lebiota if you guys need to pay a value there you could go with him um let's see some kind of longer shot odd guys here if we can um yeah nothing too crazy there i do i do like chase seaford Maybe it's just because I really need him to go off and play well in round two. But some quality options here as well. Troy Merritt actually might not be a bad play for you guys. Does much better in round two. That's his best round. Had some low scores going there early in round one. Then just struggled. He does add that favorable tee time as well. Um, let's just kind of show you guys who's expected to win. And guys, this has been pretty darn good, okay, so far this year. Gotta go back here real quick. Justin Suh expected to win. So after round one, Justin Suh is the most likely to win. And then we got Charlie Hoffman. So let's see where Charlie Hoffman, he's in 10th place. That makes perfect sense. Nate Lashley as well. Um, good form. Fourth place. Sam Ryder. Um, what is he currently in? Fourth place. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be good. Um, and Milano Grillo as well, 19th place. And the nice thing about this too, as well, guys, these top five were all on the betting card as well. So it's pretty sweet that the top five here are also the most likely to win. Then we have some longer shot guys, Adam Shank, who I kind of said was pretty much exactly like Bryce Garnett. Did Bryce Garnett finish good? Bryce Garnett did finish good. He was like, even part of the whole round was able to go and finish, I think, shoot 200 par there. T19, that's solid. Thomas Peters, not too bad. Charles Hall, not too bad as well. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if Joel Diamond wins. Um, Stefan Nager, I wouldn't be shocked to win as well. Um, you know, he's a guy that ranked out pretty well this week in the player pool, just not as much expected there. You know, 20th in the mile, it's pretty good, especially for a guy that really didn't qualify uh, necessarily for everything. But yeah, it's looking pretty good as a whole here for the Paralyze Kunta Kana Resort and Club Championship. Hopefully, your guys' head to head matchups go your way there for that Dell Technologies match play. Um, it is a fun tournament, but it's also a tournament where it does kind of suck in terms of DFS, I guess. I don't know. It's it's a little bit too slow for me in terms of DFS because really, up until I guess 3 p.m. Central tomorrow, we really have no clue how our lineups are doing especially if you did mass enter a ton of lineups and really not even up until like saturday is when we truly know how we're doing for the dow technologies match play and at least with the corrales after that round one which you can never win a dfs contest or for golfers they can never win a tournament in the first round but they certainly can lose it i guess unless you're matt jones last week because that dude definitely did win the tournament in his first round but um you know, you can never lose a tournament or you can never win a tournament in the first round, but it is pretty sweet to have, you know, a bunch of solid plays going there for the Corrales. So fingers crossed that's going to be a good weekend. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, let's keep cashing. Thanks.